which is, gather, I've gathered my supplies. Stethoscope and pen light is all I need for this one. Uh, w is wash my hands or do hand, hand, hand hygiene if my hands are clean, which they are. I can just um, use the hand sanitizer. I is introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Zane. I'll be your host today. And identify your patient. What's your name? Kelsey Knox. Great. Uh, if she had a wristband on, I would check the wristband. She does not, so it's not a problem. Um, P is provide privacy. We obviously don't have privacy. We've in fact got people videoing. If if you can't provide privacy, you're going to get permission. Uh, we're going to do a head to toe assessment. I'm going to be doing some assessments over close. Is it okay that they're watching and videoing? Okay, so I have permission. Um, I've got an added step that I use that you guys don't have to, which is because I'm the professor, I can say, you're aware that this does not affect your ability to do positive degree or negative weight. Yes. It's okay. <laughs> if, if, if anything makes you uncomfortable, I would ask you to have them stop, and that also would not affect your ability positively or negatively okay. either. It's not a problem. I can finish it on another student or on a mannequin. It's really not a problem. Um, and then E is explain what we're doing, which I already said we're doing head to toe. We're going to touch over clothes, listen with stethoscope over clothes. Um, obviously, if you're doing it on a regular patient, you're not going to do a lot of these assessments over clothes, but we're practicing, so. Okay, I just picture them coming out of the water, and I do them in kind of that order. So first thing I see that I'm going to assess is, is skin, so that's cranial nerve. Seven is facial, so give me a smile. Good, good symmetry of face. Um, also, cranial nerve five is her, her uh, is trigeminal nerve. So I'm gonna have you punch your jaw for me. Good. And close your eyes and tell me where on your face I'm touching. Um, nose, cheek, chin. Good. Uh, that was cranial nerve five trigeminal sensory. Working our way down, next thing I see that I've talked to you guys about is sinuses. So do you have any tenderness here? No. Good, how about here? That was the frontal and the maxillary sinuses. Her nose is midline and straight. I don't have any concerns with that. Um, if I was checking cranial nerve one olfactory, that's, this is one I would do it, but it's not on your sheet, so we're not gonna talk about it. Um, moving down, next thing I actually see is ears. <laughs> so I'm inspecting the ears. We got good, good symmetry for ears. I'm gonna palpate the tinea. Does this hurt? How about here? No. Good, and the tragus, that's normal. Um, and I wanna see if the ears work. So I'm gonna have you cover one ear and repeat what I say. Orange. And the other side. Banana. Good, okay. Um, so as a whisper test, that's cranial nerve eight, acoustic. Um, Moving down, I see eyes, so I'm inspecting her eyes. I'm inspecting the um, sclera, which is white, and the conjunctiva. It's a little bit pale, but not bad. Uh, pink and moist. Um, let's see, so we've inspected the eyes. We're also going to see if they react to light. So I'm checking for PERL, which stands for people's equal, which they are round, which they are, uh, reactive to light. We're not going to check accommodating, so let's check reactive to light. So just look at my nose for me. Good. And other side. And last one. Excellent. Uh, Perla is cranial nerve three, I believe it says on your sheet which is oculomotor. If you tell me optic, cranial nerve two, that's also fine. Um, we're not done with eyes yet though. I wanna see if, they, if, she, if she can actually see with them. So how many fingers am I holding up? Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing on the sides. I'm gonna come in and keep, it, keep your eyes forward. And when you first see it, tell me how many fingers I'm holding up. Good. And the other side. Good. Uh, so that was peripheral vision. We already did central. Uh, let's do gross, I mean, uh, let's do um, conjugate gaze, which is cranial nerves 3.6, ocular motor control, <coughs> clear, and abuseless. With just your eyes, not your head, I want you to follow my finger. Hi, 
Excellent. Ms. Norman? Uh, let's see. Eyes moved. Eyes could see. I looked at eyes. I think we pretty well covered it. Um, okay. Eyes are done. Ears are done. Nose is done. Let's uh, inspect mouth. So I'm looking at her lips. What pink and voice can you open mouth for me? Buccal mucosa, her teeth, her gums. Uh, roof of her mouth. <laughs> I looked at the roof of mouth already. What's your tongue for me? Good. Floor of mouth, tongue. Say all for me. Excellent. I was looking at the back of her throat, her tonsils. Say all one more time. Good. Good. Uh, her tonsils are one. Um, I looked at her posterior pharynx and her um, and her uvula. I don't think the uvula is on the list. But. Mm -hmm. um, when she said "ah," I was looking at the back of the throat. That was cranial nerves nine and ten. Gloss or mm -hmm. yes, glossopharyngeal mm -hmm. and vagus. Mm -hmm. uh, stick out your tongue for me. Okay, good. That's cranial nerve twelve, which is uh, hypoglossal. And before I forget, we're also gonna check cranial nerve 11, push up against my hands. Good, that's final accessory. Let me make sure I got them all. We got one, two, was optic. He did all of these. Yeah, he did. Three, Three four, six. Four, six, five, seven, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Excellent, yeah, all right, cranial nerves are done. All right, um, Cam, down to the neck. So we're gonna do, this is where I do, I know it's on your, up with the face on your sheet, but this is where I do lymph nodes. So I'm just gonna palpate your lymph nodes. We got preauricular, postauricular. I don't feel any abnormal ones yet. Occipital. Submandibular. I can feel a couple of those, but they're not, they're not concerning. Submandible, or submandibular, sorry. We got tonsillar, anterior cervical, posterior cervical, and supraclavicular. I felt a couple, but they were soft and usual. It was not, nothing concerning. Um, I did. I think you you oh, called it oh, submandibular. Oh, did I? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, submental here, submandibular here. Huh? Yeah. Might have missed a point there. All right, that's fine. Um, all right, let's do lungs. Um, so next thing, I mean, I I do upper lung sounds up, up here, so I do lungs usually before heart. Um, so just breathe normally and listen to lungs. your right arm for me. And your left arm.
Mine sound good. Um, I think it's on your lung section, but I'm also going to inspect her chest for uh, symmetrical chest rise, any abnormalities that I see. Obviously, I can't really inspect much with her stripped up on me. So. Uh, I'm going to listen to your heart sounds as well. Got the aortic valve. Pulmonic. Herbs point. And I would, I'm not be able to do this with the scrub, but, but tricuspid would be here, and for mitral, I'd have her lift her breast up and go there. Um, no, no, I listen with this. No, no point in that. Uh, okay. I would also listen with the uh, bell of my septum. This one has a built in bell, so I don't actually flip it over on yours to flip it over. Uh, I can also listen to those same spots with the bell of my stethoscope for heart murmurs. And that's it for heart and lungs. All right. Uh, can I have you wait back a little bit? Yeah, part now. All right. Uh, I'm inspecting the abdomen for um, contours and symmetry. Do you have any tenderness before I touch or percuss anything? Okay, good. Um, so I'm inspecting the abdomen. If I see anything weird, I'll, I'll call it out. I don't see any bulges or anything I should be concerned about right now, especially not over Um So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna auscultate. Now her belly button is right about here, so. Basically, you just listen in each quadrant until you hear something, and some of these I'm hearing quite quickly, which is why I'm just moving on. Uh, also, I'm going to listen for um, bruise in the abdominal aorta. This, these, I mostly just want you guys to point to spots. Um, you don't have to spend a ton of time listening. With the bell of my stethoscope, I've listened for the uh, abdominal aorta, three breweries, renal arteries, and iliac. And if any of this hurts, let me know. It should. And I'm percussing for timpani normals, which would be timpani is normal sound, basically where I'm where I'm percussing. <coughs> and you'll never percuss over closed on a real patient. Just so you know. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Uh, do any of that hurt? <coughs> Good. How about? This. Tell me if any of this hurts, okay? I'm palpating for basically anything abnormal. I'm feeling for like organs, but I'm also feeling to see if there's any um, like lumps or anything that don't make sense. Any of that hurt? No. Good. I think nodules or tenderness is probably what it says on your sheet. Mm -hmm. All right, I inspected, I, percu I, I auscultated, I percussed, and I palpated. Mm -hmm. Abdomen is done. Um, I move on to lower extremities from here, and then I come back and do upper extremities later, just because that just makes more sense for me, because I've already got the patient lying down for abdomen. <laughs> so I'm inspecting lower extremities for edema. Maybe a little trace, but not nothing, nothing to worry about. Um, I'm going to palpate for dorsalis pedis pulses, which on her are right here. And they're pretty good. You guys don't have to palpate for um, posterior tibialis, but I do just out of course to have it. It's a good thing to know how you're doing it. 
Um, can I check range of motion of ankles? For all the range of motion stuff, you just have to show me one side. I know if you can do one side, you can do both. So we got um, plantar flexion, dorsiflexion, and we got some rotation in the ankle as well. Um, push, so you have to make both sides for this. Push against my hands, pull up against my hands. Good, five out of five strength for her ankles. Did the pulses, I did the range of motion on the strength. Okay, uh, knees. We got flexion. This is also flexion of the hip, by the way. And extension. Um, push up against my hand. Pull down against my hand. Good. Five out of five strength for me. Um, we already did flexion of hip. We don't do extension of hip. We've got adduction, abduction, and we've got internal and external rotation of the hip. Any of that hurt? Good. Not supposed to. All right. Um, this for lower extremities, go ahead and sit up for me. And we'll do the same thing with upper extremities. I'll do this arm so they can see better. Um, actually, let's start with your hands. I'm inspecting the hands, inspecting the joints. Do you have any pain here? Good, I'm also palpating the joints for pain. Uh, give me a squeeze, harder. Excellent, five out of five strength. Um, if they've got nail polish on, you can flip it over and still do cap refill on the underside. It's not as good, but it still works. Her capillary refill is fine. She's got good circulation in her fingers. Checking her pulses. That never checks. There it is. Good. Good strong pulses on both sides. Uh, let's see. I inspect the cap refill. Pulses. So we've got extension of elbow, flexion of elbow. I want you to pull against me. Push. Good. Five out of five strength for elbow. Now this is also where I try to remember to tell you I would check her biceps tendon, do tendon reflexes, patellar, and Achilles tendons. Um, I didn't uh, that's all I want from you guys. I just want you guys to tell me that you will. It's, it's really hard to do. We didn't go into too much detail. Um, the other thing that I, I knew I was missing something with hands, the other thing I do with hands is I want you to put your hands like this. Flip them over. Back. And faster. And give me five. Excellent. That was cerebellar coordination. You passed. Nice. I uh, Shoulder is already in a flexed position, so we're going to try extension. Good. Adduction. Abduction. Tell me if any of this hurts. It's not supposed to. Okay. Um, and then we're going to bend your arm and internal rotation, external rotation of the shoulder. You wouldn't have to do the nose to finger thing for the hands? No, not as long. If I do this one, I don't do the nose. Oh, finger. I thought it was both. This okay. is a separate, that's a, it's the same test. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's testing the same thing. All right, that was shoulders. You know what I didn't do, I didn't, and I know I missed it because I've already I'm already down past it. Is I didn't do like anything else on the neck other than the neck bone. So let's finish the neck. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I'm inspecting the neck for symmetry and lesions. I'm also going to palpate the trachea for midline. We're also going to palpate the carotid arteries one at a time. And we're going to listen for carotid bruits with the bell of the stethoscope. And if it distracts you, hear them breathe. You can tell them to hold the breath, <laughs> so, which is fine, because uh, you will hear um, bronchial blast sounds there as well. Yeah, I heard last time. Yep. Uh, <laughs> All right, I listened, palpated, what else, I'm, I'm missing something else. Oh, range of motion of neck, what's the mm -hmm. range of motion of neck? Which is actually what made me think of it because I was about to do range of motion of spine. I was like, I didn't do neck yet. All right, uh, look down at the floor just yet, okay, good. Up at the ceiling, tip your head to the right, tip your head to the left, and look left with your whole head. There you go, and look right. 
Excellent. Good job. Right, your motion's normal for neck. Let's see how it is for spine. So stand up for me. Uh, bend over, touch toes. And I'm palpating the spine to see if it's straight, which it is. Stand up. Lean back. Towards, look up toward the ceiling. Okay, good. Uh, lean to your right. Lean to your left. Now rotate your torso to, to the right and rotate to the left. Good. Spine range of motion is normal. Take a few steps for me. And then on back. And have a seat while I think for a second if I missed anything. Let's see. I think that's it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Cool. Yee.